free take and include one day and he reckons he's, he's passed not, not one day it was just every night before training right, just okay. difficult ones from the corner and that yeah, don't think he missed a couple of them since yeah, himself and Wiley had a few good experiences over the years and I suppose they probably haven't kicked too much ball since Wiley have they <laughs> you miss me <laughs> I miss you yeah bring him back yeah, no, it's great to be here as well and I says thanks for having me up tonight no, good to have you well look we're going we're gonna to talk to you later um, and I'll talk about you talk about Leitrim yeah, and Gales and that um, I suppose, folks, where Marty's not with us tonight, just in case you thought Marty got a lot better looking and shorter hair, Thanks. dressed himself better. Um, Marty, <laughs> Marty's not here tonight, but of course he will be a permanent fixture. We have lost Barry Malone uh, this year, a uh, commitment to the Fermanagh cause, but uh, he might pop in and out then, now and again. No, we don't want him back. No, we don't want him back. We've got Whaley now. We've got Whaley. So two and two, two true men. He's racing for Yes, he's Edward Lake. Well, he just did, so. <laughs> <laughs> Racy tapped them up last year. Jib, uh, I suppose Jib's news is going to be a feature again this year. Is it going to be as reliable as it was last year? Uh, well, it depends. I actually do have a bit of news which I heard on the radio. Go on ahead. Does anybody know who was the first county in Ireland to fill all the football all stars and all the uh, hurling all stars? Right. That's not the social media question. No, people can home can I ask. Just heard that 15, 20 minutes ago. Right. Did you hear the answer, bud? What did I? <laughs> I, got, I got it as well. <laughs> well, Jib, uh, on to the social media question for the folks at home. Remember, folks, your opinion matters is our motto. So, Jib, work away. Yeah. After the first round of the league so far, who impressed and who did not impress? Um, what was the biggest surprise of the weekend? Nice, easy one. Okay, okay. Let me get well, started. I to get started. We'll look. Uh, I'll sort my notes out here. Uh, we're going to filter through Division Four and Division Three boys. Uh, quickly enough. Um, we start in Division Four. Uh, London, London with uh, a five-point defeat at home to Carlo. What's notable about this game? There was no fourth official hand. Then you were saying. Yeah, I just read that this morning on Twitter. I think it was the London manager himself tweeted just saying. I suppose not really giving out, but saying maybe in terms of a bit of disrespect to Division 4 teams that they had to actually pull someone out from the, I think it was the London County Board or someone had to step in and do it, you know, so, no, this is only a small issue, but at the same time, you know, well, Division coming 4. from Division 4, do you find there's a certain element of that as regards media, you know, officials, is that something you've seen? Oh, something you've seen, and like, listen, it's not that we're consistently giving out about it, but listen, them players are putting in a lot of effort too and you know you'd like to see you playing even across the board but I can recall I don't know it probably wasn't you involved I think it was Mickey Moore years ago when we went out actually when Kilkenny were still playing in the league like more than that we turned up for a Division 4 game and the pitch wasn't even lined out do you know and like we just like you know listen we had a job to do ground and win yeah. but at the same time like you know you're leaving things like that going like you're training four or five nights a week you're training as much as any other team like all you're expecting is that little bit more professionalism from and it's the GA in control of that, you yeah, know, and it's not really, you can't blame London, you can't blame Carlo, but like, that's the GA, the GA knew who they were sending over to that game to referee it, to, fish, to officials, and then obviously they had to take a box and say, is there a fourth official? I don't know, was there someone up in Crow Park and said, I should have not bother sending him, maybe The, sa- the sad know. thing about that too is, you know, I'm sure there's, there's a lot of Carlo supporters paid, paid a lot of money and travelled over to support their team, you know, oh, and they're yeah. expecting, you know, if you, if you go to Crow Park on Saturday night, I'm sure there was a fourth official there. Kildare in Dublin, like you know, so you have to have that even even across the board. And even probably the next one, I guess, the fourth fish got injured. Any amount of them, you know, but I suppose that that result, you know, we would all probably pick Kildare to win that after the year they had last year, so you know, but probably it's not probably closer, you know, it's probably closer than you thought. Yeah. Dublin last year, you thought. yeah, probably. Yeah. I suppose, but then Roy Slip can be a tough place to go as, as everyone knows. I mean, yeah. Fermanagh. Yeah. Romano went out of the championship to, to London a few years ago. <laughs> but no, it can be, and in club games and in... Oh, 100%. We've been in the championship last year, and in fairness, we got a bit of luck. Uh, one of our lads, Warren Kennedy, came on and got two goals at two crucial stages. And I personally believe if we didn't get them at the time, that we were on the back foot against them, do you know? And Joe Gordon, another thing to note, which is you know, a huge stat, was that there were seven London-born players talked mm-hmm. out for London at the weekend. Yeah. Which is a, I think I, that's the highest so far. That, which, is, you know, which is great to see that they're doing so much underage, that yeah, they're in years to come. You never know, they could have 15 lads there starting yeah. for London, they're all London born, you know, yeah. so it's a positive to take out. It's of fantastic, it, yeah, you know. yeah. Uh, I suppose, and uh, it would be good to see, I think, Carl progress as, as I suppose a smaller, weaker county, because then we move on to Leash, who, who are the favourites for the division, 212 to 9 points against Limerick, something that I suppose we expected that, didn't we, really? Yeah, you'd expect that, surely, you know. I suppose, from my point of view, like with, with Leash, you know, um, I was surprised that actually a couple of years ago that when Pierre Creedon left Tipperary and took the leash job that, that things didn't seem to go 
as well for him there as it hadn't tipped. You know, I, I actually rated him as a as a very, very good coach and a, and a very, very good manager who'd done a great job starting off, you know, the, the temporary role and, and uh, you know, ventilation for whatever job didn't work out and they found themselves in Division 4, so they'll be expecting an immediate return, like there'll be no two ways about it and, and you would be you would be expecting them to do so. You would, and I suppose just a quick note to Limerick, you know, Limerick's hurling is starting to improve at under 21 age and that, you know, you know, it, we often see it, you know, the dual counties, they can't really survive, like Wexford hurling is strong, for example, yeah, but their yeah. football is relatively weak at the minute, it seems to be happening in Limerick as well, you know, that... Yeah, but I suppose it's something that, if, if there's a lot of them good quality footballers are probably good quality hurlers as well, yeah, and yeah. Like they're going to go where they're going to see that they can achieve a lot more success, yeah. you know, and... I'd say Limerick's very much the same, you know, but they're all just, they're still a competitive team, but Leash are definitely too good to be down there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think the thing with Limerick, like you, you, you definitely don't fancy going down to them. No, you know, no. they're they're easier to talk to if you have them in their own pots, but you know, making that journey down to them can be can be a different yeah. story. Like, yeah. you know, it's not too long ago that I think you're maybe only talking 10, 10 12 years. That Leash were Division One, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. so or Le- Limerick, sorry, were Division One, so it's it's a it's a long way down for them. So there's they still have a bit of of pride in that so it's definitely a hard place to go you'd want them at home instead of having to travel there uh, Antrim Antrim and Leitrim let's not talk about that one <laughs> Skip on enjoy that. your tweet enjoy your tweet for anyone to um, check up on it the only positive we can say there was well, after a minute we were winning yeah <laughs> <laughs> one nil up one nil up after a minute and Emlyn tweeted ref blow it up uh, but no <laughs> listen it, is, it was a disappointing result um, I suppose listen I you know obviously when you have an insight into it and I'm not really involved at the minute I've come back from injury but they only be kicking up, you know, putting up a point in the second half. Um, six four at half time, definitely in the game. You know, heard different reports from it. Um, it is disappointing, like you know. But listen, we've a young team. Lads just need to have to get back and regroup again. But again, Antrim come down from Division Three. They're always we, we knew going in, like we've we've kind of a tough enough draw with Antrim and Leash our first two games. We all we knew that they were probably the two strongest in the division. Um, and like even looking at the results throughout the whole all divisions, it's very hard to get away get a win away from home regardless. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's, the scoreline and performance is the most disappointing thing really yeah. for us. And only yeah. scoring five points, um, it's just it's, it's not good enough. But need a sharpshooter back, Wiley. Really. Need to get Wiley back sure, in and practice. The sharpshooter back. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wiley, you, you were you were involved in Leighton, of course. Yes, a number of years ago. Twenty. She's involved everywhere. Twenty. Twenty fourteen, I went down to to coach uh, Leighton along with Sean. Um, a oh, great time. Well, now you say you went down because I mean, several occasions I seen them run and Enniskill and run. Uh, they used to come up to me. They used to come to you. When, when it was difficult getting off work, you bring Mohammed <laughs> we we to the mountain. We were getting good expenses to come up. You got probably working like two months later. No, I, yeah, I went. I went down with Sean. What was that? Twenty fourteen. Yeah, I think. Yeah, we were actually 14, yeah. we were very very fortunate that year. Um, you know, we were in Division Four along with. Tipperary and Clare were the two teams that got promoted that year and really we uh, we drew with Clare down in Clare and we had promotion in our own hands and we went to Waterford on a, yeah. on a Saturday evening with a six day turnaround after an away trip to Wicklow which we had a, we had a great win in and you know we probably took Waterford for granted right. and you know that ended up costing promotion Clare went up um, along with Tip instead of us and them two teams haven't looked back since you know yeah, well, yeah. It's now, fairness, not to not, not to blow his head or whoever at the time, but that year probably was our best chance in the last. Yeah, since I, think, I started playing to get promoted, it was it was the, it was the one time that it was actually in our control. Yeah, I, th- know, I think it was it was probably what you were saying. We won the FBD that year, and we were in. I think it was April. We, was, we suffered our first defeat in April that year. I don't yeah. think you know Leitrim had ever went that long before. So the talent is there, you know, if everything is in place. But if you go back to that team that played, like I guess we were lucky that we had everybody like that we yeah, could, could yeah. get like from like even like, like Paul Brennan and Kevin Connolly, these lads like you know Paul Brennan for Donny Gall number six yesterday. Yeah. We lost Kevin Connolly, who's on the Cork Connell last Connell. year. You know, like like we've had such a turnaround that but that year we definitely had everyone available yeah, that we, we could have had. And I'd say if you go through that team now, I'd say if there's one or two of us maybe left from I think the there's only there's only three because funny, you know, <clears throat> talking with Anthem boys just before the games at the weekend and he'd asked me, you know, who could look out for the interim team obviously when Emlyn wasn't playing and uh, you know, he showed me the twenty six and there was only three and the twenty six that was that's, involved that's, that's only three to four years ago. Yeah. So the turnaround of players and, and like the population's just not in Leitrim for that to happen. No. Like if it, you know, if there was twenty six players turn around in Tyrone in four or five years or in Dublin or in Donegal it would, would make things extra hard. But when you don't have the population like Leitrim have it Makes it near impossible. No, okay. but you know, great people, great football county. Okay, well, look, the, the only way is up, I suppose, at the moment for <coughs> and kick on. White low 12, water for 12, I suppose. Look, yeah, a draw, you maybe think, I don't know if 
both either teams harbour much chance of promotion, but. No, but would you, would you would you expect John Evans to do something? That's what I was just going to say. With, with, with him coming in, I heard mm-hmm. there's been a massive response down there. So mm-hmm. I suppose maybe he. I'm not sure who was home or who was away in that one. But like like yeah, home. so at home, like no more than that in any game. I think if you're playing someone along the level card, that you might be, you know, they'd probably expect it to win that. Um, Jared Murphy who had a good game. Missed the free kick in front of the post in the last minute of the match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And Wakefield was hard. I mean, Wakefield people always thought with Wakefield's home record, you know, they are hard beat. Yeah, I see Shani, Shani Furlong still going strong for them. Yeah. He popped up with a, with a couple of big scores. Yeah, five points. Yeah. So, you know, John, listen, John Evans' record's been, been very good wherever yeah. it's been. We bumped into him a few times. With yeah, even with Scott, Scott he did, like, did a lot with yeah. Scott, to in fairness to him. Yeah. So he did. So, you know, if, if anyone can get a response out of it, go to the bottom. So. What's this space then? Okay. On the division three, I think we're, we're going to start with uh, Fermanagh and Wexford. Um, 3 7 to, to 2 5. Um, we have a couple of interviews actually with, with the players which you play in a moment. Um, 3 7 to 2 5. I don't know, was that it myself? And, um, How was it? <laughs> the pitch was very heavy, you know. The the four goals all actually were, were soccer style goals, kind of all from mistakes, really. Um, from a stat that a friend of mine gave me earlier, if man only had one forward that scored from play until Paul McCusk came on, he kicked another one. Um, the Wexford manager, I suppose, if we're going to play him, maybe Potty, we'd, or we we'll play Donny Waters here, we'll play his interview now. We'll listen to what he has to say and we'll come back sure. Donny, thanks for, for taking the time out after the game. Disappointing result in difficult conditions. Um, were the goals what, what cost you, really? Yeah, well, it didn't help us, it didn't help our cause from the start, you know. Um, when you can see goals like that, it's, it drains the team a little bit. But you can't really put it all down to that now, but. Um, it was just uh, killed us at the vital times, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose you started to cause problems when you put Nick Doyle in the second half. You missed a few opportunities with Freeze as well. You know, the game kind of took a real, a real different turn of that. That's something to work on for for Sligo next week. Yeah, well, we had to kind of change our approach. There wasn't working and um, playing the, the way we were playing, so we put Nick in, and he caused a good bit of difficulty. Um, you know, got two goals off him, um, and as you said. If they hadn't got the, the goals that are from our mistakes, we look at it could be a different story. But look at taking that away from Fermanagh, they did what they had to do and they got the result. Yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose a, a draw with Dublin in the O'Byrne Cup was, you know, was a positive result for you. Um, uh, and then kicking on, I suppose to hear to come away to Fermanagh is a t- it's a tough place to come. Um, from probably one of the favourites for the division. So all in all. Not a bad performance, is that fair to say? No, not a bad performance. Like, we're blooding 22 new lads out of 38 on our panel this year. Like, so to come up here, was a, it's, it's always a daunting task, no matter who you have on your team. If you have 38 lads that are on the panel for years, it still doesn't make no difference. Um, mm-hmm. For man, it's a, it's a very tough spot. And the conditions today now for both teams were, were uh, horrendous, really, the full conditions. But, uh, yeah, look, it's a great learning curve for us. Um, the blooding new young lads see what it's all about. And, no better place than come up here and uh, learn their way. I have to leave yourself exposed on the referee. He, he was busy today. I mean, three reds, one black, racing McMenamin sent to the stand and, and several yellows. Could you understand it was a tough game for him to, to referee? Yeah, I think he like, lost his way a little bit there near the end. Um, he couldn't see everything, I suppose, yeah. and, with the crowd and then everything, so much happening there. Cause, uh, I wouldn't like to do it personally, do you know what I mean? Um, it's hard to get on top of it all, and I presume he's been watched too to do a good job too. So it's, it's not an easy job. You know, we wouldn't like to do it. So, look, he done what he did. Um, no, I wouldn't agree with all his decisions, but what's done is done, and we we'll move on to the next yeah, game. We, we we never do dis- agree with all their decisions. No, you? you can't. But you can't really uh, disagree with them too often. We don't. Uh, so next week, I suppose away to Sligo, two away games. So you'll really be looking to bounce back there. Yeah, we're hoping to. It's unfortunate that we'd like to get a home game under our belt, but look at this the way the league is. Um, but yeah, back on the road again up to Sligo. It's going to be the same as today. Really, like long journey. Um, Probably heavy conditions, the weather is probably not going to change much. So, look, we know all that's ahead of us, no excuses next week. So, today was a, a big learning curve. Good. So, hopefully, next week now we can uh, get back to train Tuesday night and keep going. Okay, so that was big Dahi Waters from Wexford summing up the game. I suppose he said there was a heavy pitch underfoot for both teams, um, obviously, and the, the sentence off as well. Um, but he said they were relatively, relatively happy with, with the performance because uh, the, the 21 out of, out of the 38 members of 21 or 22 that have never experienced senior in the county so that's mm-hmm. yeah. maybe 10 scores to 7 well they weren't that far off no they're probably not I would say maybe from, from the manager's point of view when, he, when he's talking about them being relatively happy it's maybe performances and individual performances like I, I would imagine 
you know, Wexford, they were probably coming up here not with any real great hope of, of getting points. You know, they're probably looking for Mana as one of the teams that's a shoe in for promotion. And, you know, me and Emlyn were, were talking about it off air earlier. Um, they've Sligo next week, and I would say maybe that's more realistic for them to pick up points. And I would say that, you know, he's happy with the level of performance. He's seven debutants. I'm sure he's got something out of them, so they'll be focusing solely on, on, on Sligo now coming up to pick up their first two points. Yeah, yeah. No, that, I mean, it's interesting, I suppose. Like, we're going to get the Fermanagh perspective now, and we talk in a bit more detail. We interviewed wing half forward Aidan Breen, and this is what he had to say. Joined by Fermanagh's Aidan Breen. Aidan, uh, two points in the bag, heavy on the foot conditions. How do you assess the performance? Ah, the performance wasn't great now, to be honest. Like, but as you say, two points in the bag. And that's where we came from here. Two points with a lot to work on. Performance definitely needs to be up to play in the next couple of weeks. But we have a chance. That's a beauty about the league. You have a game next week, so a chance to rectify that next week. Wax had a lot of ball in the first 15 minutes. Didn't really convert it. I suppose it took us then to the 20th minute. And Cian Connor to go score uh, a second point. Something to work on. Definitely, it was a, it was a good score. That's from Cian. We, we worked the ball well back in the middle. You know, patience, and then Cian came up and drove it over. But I think in the second half as well, we may have went 20 minutes without scoring as yeah. well. It's definitely it's something that we need to work on. You know, we, we do have these wee purple patches, mm -hmm. and to be honest, we've got them a couple of lucky goals as well. But we need to be more consistent. We need to play for the full 70 minutes. Yeah, Rain Jones with three points from play, uh, uh, and then unfortunately the, the, the red card. So he, he'll obviously be be a loss. And um, uh, you know, around the middle, though, then yourself, you picked up a good bit of break ball as well. I mean, what was most pleasing today? The middle third or. I think the most pleasing part was that we weren't we weren't good, but we grinded it out. And we got the two points, you know, and it's, it's it's a positive that you're winning games, but you're not you're coming off the field and you felt that just we lost that game. You know, it's a positive play. Jonesy going off was a massive loss. Jonesy a massive player for us, a massive player for anyone. But uh, that's it. Like we're going to boys are going to pick up injuries, boys are going to pick up suspensions. That, that's the nature of it. There's, you don't have a squad of 26, 20, 30 players for nothing. Nick. There's boys there for a reason. It's up to some other man to come in now and take the, take the chance. And when you talk with the squad, I suppose the introduction of Ray McCluskey, you know, Wexford didn't score after he was uh -huh. introduced. Paul McCusker, again, as always, bringing a bit of life to it and kicked the, kicked the fine point. Uh, young McGee as well, you know, uh, you know, stepping up. So, as you say, the squad's important, but these are going well. Uh, the squad's definitely important. Then, like Paul came in, and it was just after Wexford got the goal. And Paul stuck the ball over the bar. Like, you know, you you need your subs coming in to make an impact. He definitely came in after a team scores a goal. You need to be getting the next score. And if your subs coming on and doing that, like, you couldn't beat it. And Clucker came on, added that bit of cuteness, that bit of experience, just calmed the whole thing down, won them a couple of balls. And then it's good to see young lads like McGee coming in. Like. Mm -hmm. Good day. Like. Good to see the big man, Shamey. Was two two <laughs> soccer strikes and uh, and two one in total. But good to have him back. Ah, uh, let's hope Bal and Mallard weren't watching them today. Nick, but uh, uh, big Shamey, he's putting in the shift. Nick, everyone's putting in the shift. So uh, as long as uh, every man, listen, you have to work hard for that jersey. Every man's in the same place. So you know, it's dog eat dog there. Nick, it's the way it should be. Yeah, and just finally, I suppose, awfully up next, another home game. Uh, off your be nine points today, or nine uh, points up the by, by Longford. Um, uh, but they had a good over in Copa, who was obviously beat yeah. Dublin second or third string. So our ambitions are really should be promotion, but it's one game at a time. One, uh, it's one game at a time. You can't look past the next game. Offaly's coming up here and that pitch out there, like no, no, it's heavy. Offaly's a big physical team. You can't really get a running game going in that kind of pitch, like and. If we we're making the same mistakes next week as we made today, we'll be inviting off the boys come in, hitting us. Like, we'll, be, we'll be looking for trouble. We could be playing a fire there. Like, and they, this young lad, Keane Johnson, in the corner forward as well. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully it's going to be a dangerous game again next week. I think it's, there's not much between any teams in this division. Like. Alright, Jim, Jim's just informed me of just the enemy. <laughs> That's a button, Jim. That's a button. So many people may be able to tell me. They just don't know what's happening here. But anyway, back to the football. Um, okay, so we didn't bring there. So, well, uh, of comic note, but he says, Shamey Quigley, I says, good, good to have Shamey back in 2 1. Um, and he says, he hopes Ban the Matter United weren't watching. But uh, Ban the Matter hit six and six right now, so they might need six him. Off. Look, two, two, one. Bridges, you? you know, but Jimmy, I mean, I suppose, like, you know, from Anna, talk about from Anna best to score and threats, but from Anna have it, Tomas Cargan and Sean Quigley for the last couple of years, I suppose, more particularly from place balls, but 
Seamus Quigley two opportunistic goals, but it's still good to have a man sitting two one. It's still good. I think you know the thing is take Shimmy's two goals out of that, and for man, it's probably beat. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It gave them a massive platform in the first half. But listen, I suppose every football fan outside of of Fermanagh, they've, they've heard about Shimmy Quigley, and you know I think anyone within the county that knows him, they just wanted to see him. You know, take that opportunity to play in this stage. And he's, he's lost serious. Uh, he has a eyes in in, in, shape, You know, in great. I like you know, Shimmy's been kind in and out of the panel for a few different years, and you know, just hasn't stuck at it. But this year, you know, even talking to him, it just seems to be to be a different Shimmy. Like, and you just hope that you know he really does keep knocking him down and doing yeah. what he's doing because you know you you want to see Shimmy Shimmy quickly play championship football. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. he's very confident naturally too. It would just be such a waste. If you love a man throwing that can hit 2-1, wouldn't you? Uh, listen, we, especially yesterday we took Clay and throwing that 2-1. <laughs> <laughs> listen, you just want the whole country to see Shimmy Quigley's talent because naturally I don't think there's many better in better. the world of Ireland. Uh, just, I suppose, from Anna, Ryan Jones get three points from midfield and then, but then got a straight red. There's a bit of a melee. Um, uh, Wexford then lost two men to red cards as well but you know, your midfield is getting three points. That's going to, as Aidan says, it's part and parcel of the game injuries and suspensions, but I suppose it's a quite a big loss, isn't it? It is a big loss, especially with that scoreline of three. What was it? Three, what three is seven. Three seven. Do you know what I mean? We take the goals out of it, it's nearly half your points, you know. Yeah. But it's a fair return for any midfielder to kick kicking like, like, you know, Do you know what I mean? In fairness to him, to Ryan, he's, he's an athletic fella, like, do you know, yeah. he'd be a huge loss for them. What's uh, that? Is that next two games? games? I think it is on Maggie two, but I suppose it'll have to be, you know, it's it was, it was a tough game to referee yesterday, now Harrison mm-hmm. from yeah. Throne. He had his critics, but God, like I mean, it was it Sean Horson? Yeah, it wasn't pretty. Um, Just on the setting off, Sean Paul Curry wants to know why he why was Ryan Jones sent off. Do we know? Why no, he? honestly, no. It's not the Fermanagh bias, but nobody seemed to see it. Straight red, but wasn't it? So it was a straight red, mm-hmm. and the linesman, you know, I think I pulled it up in the umpire. So look, we we don't really know, but the straight red was given. So yeah. interesting to see if Fermanagh it's, appealed it. It's probably a pity too for for Jonesy because he's getting a run of games now. You know, no, last year he was kind of. You know, suffering a lot of injuries, yeah. and he was, you know, he was playing maybe and not being able to train. So, you know, no more so than talking about Shimmy Quigley. Like, you want to see boys like Jonesy getting getting at it and full run. He's had a great year with the club. Like, so it's just maybe going to break up his momentum a wee bit. So you kind of hope that it, it doesn't. You know, so and it's good to see. So it was his club mate from Derry uh, Michael Jones, back. He's you know, Michael Jones, probably maybe our most consistent defender for the last five or six yeah, years. Very, He's very a go to man marker. So it was great to see him coming on yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, probably, I would say, probably on that. He only re- recently rejoined the panel, didn't he? Did. So I'd say maybe there's a few boys that wasn't in the 26 yesterday, mightn't be. Maybe he's really happy. happy with that, but you know, way you brought him on, he steadied up a bit. Then Ryan McCluskey comes on with 15 yeah, minutes yeah, to go. Wexford don't score and McCluskey comes on. It's, you know, I suppose the old dogs again. Ah, yeah, listen, Mickey Jones will be, Mickey Jones will see a lot of football this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all right. So, look, Roy, I'll stop there. You get to go on ahead. All these comments. Sorry, Jim. So because we're on. We're starting that Jim's bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Benny Courtney. I don't know what he's on here, but he says, "Hope it's more exciting than yesterday's game." Benny, you didn't write back to me what you meant there. Benny, let us know. Yeah. Uh, Robbie Mack says Cork unimpressed. He was impressed with Donny Gall. Jack Ronan, Gall impressed the most. JP Geller wants to know why. I think we Roy wants you to take him to the shop again. <laughs> You might have to explain that to us. <laughs> or not. Kerry McGuire goes, Kerry. Uh, <coughs> Kerry Joe, just spelled her name. <laughs> <laughs> Joey Burns, for legal reasons, we're not getting into that there one. Uh, Geraldine Kelly. Oh, we'll talk about that one later on. It's to do with the throne match. Uh, Davy Callahan, Sweet Jesus McCarran. Ask so, David if Davy's still watching. David, have you ever been to Ibiza? <laughs> Well, this could be something to do with it because the man never got the feet sunburnt in holidays. Right. Always had the socks on, socks ready for championships. Socks on, no, you can't no. burn the, wa- the wands. <laughs> and then Paul Judge, uh, Jeb asked Wiley, did he get the ironing done before he left the house? No, she's still at it. It's <laughs> great to see the interaction with Wiley. I mean, that's why we have him on the show. Look at the, look at the attention. The viewers are the viewers are multiplying. I mean, you know it's about football. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. it. You're so well. It's a social thing. <laughs> um, social group. Eileen Henry, well done to everyone yesterday. A hard fought and well deserved victory. Get great to see Shimmy Quigley back in the panel. Uh, Gary Milani, will Jason Lewis ever get on the will ever get a Fermanagh call up? 
Don't think so now. No, <laughs> thankfully you didn't lance that yet. Just a couple of those That's points. To speed on. Maybe, uh, maybe, you know, I think Galway, fair to say Galway was one of the more impressive wins against Tyrone. I know we come on to that, but I think that's a fair enough comment. Yeah, mm. well, as we were just mentioning before, as we said, all fair, like that, that head in the shoe was a tough place. Like, it's yeah. not a pitch that I think any county actually not. enjoys playing surface wise. It's just a bleak, damp, wet day yesterday. Like, still, like it's, it'd be very hard to get nearly motivated for yeah. you know, plus, that plus type two, of place. Golf is up now, and you know, they've been looking to kick on from what they've done last year. Well, Golf are consistent in fairness the last number of years. Yeah, like, I know they lost the Connacht last year, probably would have expected to win it, but they got off to a super start too after 20 seconds. Colby yeah, DeVoe yeah, had yeah. a ball in the back of the net. Probably the, off. The, the, aye, like Tyrone must, you know, yesterday, I think they ended 12 men. Yeah. You know, which is probably unheard of under Mickey Hart. Like, I know Perry Hart got a black card later on and couldn't be replaced, but, you know, it's not often the Tyrone team to lose their discipline to that extent that they end up getting three. three and Tyrone, we'll, we'll, we'll come on to that later. We're we'll making another point. We, we, we will come on to that. Uh, Galway's near neighbours in Division 3, awfully. Different province, but near neighbours. Mm. We talk be less than that. Um, <laughs> Offley won 13, who for mana play next week. Long for 3-18. Now, a couple of men asked me during the week, have any tips for, you know, for this weekend? And I said, Jesus, Offley are a great point, great price at evens, home to Longford. Because a man that knows Longford well was telling me they're not in great shape. Wiley? Aye, but I didn't say what kind of shape Offley would be in. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, you know, probably, you know, the noises in the Longford camp hadn't been hadn't been that great. I know Owen McGuire joined them at the start of the year as strength and conditioning coach, which was a great coup for them and, and he's doing great work. But just, you know, between players not committing and, and players just not knowing what they're what they're at, like one of one of our lads in Dramar, Dan Masterson, had retired and then, you know, actually come on again yesterday, so there was there was a turnaround there. But as I said to you, Rory, on, on Saturday about it, you know, if Robbie Smith's in form, Robbie Robbie can big manage the team, you know, Kick all, eight points. All due respect to Offaly, like, but you know, if Robbie's in form, he would beat a lot, a lot of teams. It's better than Offaly, you know. Yeah. So, Keen um, Johnson, the, the young up and coming star in Offaly, hit three points, which is mm-hmm. you know, which is positive yeah, to see. Three three young three young three play, you know? I, th- I think the big thing for me in that that division, I think out of the eight teams that's in it, there's five with new managers, or maybe six. Yeah, so it's kind of an unknown yeah. quantity, yeah. and you know, teams are maybe bedding in the first one or two games, and managers are trying to get things in place but all of a sudden you'll find yourself that you need to get points yeah. you know and that's yeah. that's the that's the good thing for the teams that won yesterday there's four won four didn't so you know that's it Armagh Arma Slego Emlyn 217 Armagh 9 points Slego you were saying you're surprised Slego good forwards but yeah um, I probably like listen I probably expected that everyone probably expected Armagh yeah. to win but you know, I suppose I'm living a Sligo friend with a lot of Sligo lads. Um, I got friends now? Uh, so one or two just. <laughs> 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 but in fairness, like, to have quality forwards, that's the thing about them, and I think they'll be disappointed with that return of eight or nine. Now, they had, they, I think, again, did six or seven dividends against Sligo yesterday, which, again, it's it's very hard to be. Yeah. Like, up to Arma, first round of the league, six uh, or seven new lads. Listen, it's, it's very hard for any team to be competitive in early probably, like, no, probably no more so than what we said about Wexford. Coming from Anna and blooded seven new ones, Lego yeah. probably went the exact same. Didn't expect to get anything. And they're maybe. probably looking for Wexford next week. You know, no, so, so the best thing to come out of Slego these days is EJ Men's work. Yeah, it's good to see. Well, super dry fire. You must be. Oh yeah, yeah, that that first yeah. EJ's. Yeah, the suit. Emma used to work in EJ's. Yeah, yeah. Stop this crap. Get EJ on here for a night himself in the couch. Oh, you get crack. Check one of the ones right online. Actually, they're great. They're great online. They're great crack. It's only a one hour show. But um. But we no, might pop in. Yeah, definitely. I yeah, will give them a shout to come in. But no, but for the lads themselves, I'd say in the more than maidens, they'll be looking at next week and yeah. bouncing back. You know, because like, there's still promotion there for any of them teams. Like Thank as you. I said, they, no more than that. Any manager coming in probably realistically sits down at the start here and looks and says, "Well, we need five wins out of seven. Realistically, give ourselves yeah. a chance." Yeah. And re- they're probably gonna look at our man and say, "Well, that's it's yeah. a hopeful one, yeah. but it's not. Like, they're not like they were looking to get. A, they got a draw against them last year at home. I think they, they were five points down during the injury time and scraped the draw. I don't know where." Not the London will think we'll see Armagh as the strongest team. One hundred percent. Armagh, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm the same. And I think the big thing in that division, like most of the divisions, you know, already your seven games. If you four at home, yeah, it makes a massive, massive difference. You know. Well, look now. Now we go on to I suppose we we, we go on to a team. And we talk about favourites for going up, and a team that's probably coming under the radar is Westmead, who went to Derry two seventeen to two fourteen for a win for Westmead in Celtic Park. <coughs> Come on, lane Derry on too, didn't they? They did, and as people say, you know, Derry, what Derry shows up, obviously they're still like the slap Neil boys, but Westmead, for a team that went down the divisions yeah, crazy. consecutively, 
there's every chance that Westmead could could go up back up to Division Two. Even like last year, we did them in Division Four, and yeah. we were we were close to every team, whether we won it or not. Yeah. Westmead absolutely blew us out of the water. Really? Like, yeah, and I always said after that, I was like, there there are no way a Division Four team, yeah. if not even Division Three, I would have been saying to myself, there's no way, there's yeah. every possibility they could go straight yeah. back up. Yeah. It's just if some like the quality players, like like Hazlin, like him alone. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a handful. Like, but to have Kieran sure, Martin, right. there's, there's, there's plenty of other lads there. There's been abundance of good forwards, and as you said, it's just like. To, but to go from one to four in four consecutive years was, you know. And then listen, they could they could easily go four three two. Easy. You know, they've been in two yeah. lesser finals yeah. as well. Yeah, like, that's yeah. the thing yeah. you forget about them. You know, you know and it's kind of I know they've got there in Dublin, they've bet them well, yeah, but it's still to get there, like it's it's massive confidence it's massive, booster yeah. for themselves. Like, mm-hmm. you know, so it's it's it, that's interesting to see. I mean, that, I think I think they'll be a dark horse personal. Do you have any more comments? Yeah, Connor Sutton wants to know, Jim, how did the skiing go? We'll not get into that, is <laughs> Benny Courtney, Tipperary, had a great win. True, Benny. Did, Benny. Back to you, Derry. Thanks, Jim. Um, Just on that Derry game too, Derry actually missed the penalty during the last 15 to 30 seconds of the last two, you know, to tie it up. So. Yeah, okay. See, Derry, Derry were tipped early on too, I know, could you want to move on, Ray, but Derry have been tipped by a lot of ones for promotion too, but again, you know, to a new manager coming in that's not experienced at this level, it's, you know, coming okay, from yeah. from a minor outfit, you know, it's going to take him a while to find yeah. his feet as well. And you know, when you're dealing with senior players, it's a lot different, like so. Different. And <laughs> I mean, we discussed it. You talked about Derry. We discussed Derry a lot in this show last year because we discussed the the club within Derry. Yeah. We had Chrissy McKay down. We discussed about Glenullen that time that they didn't feel because yeah. they didn't agree with the ref. Is Derry comes with its Challenges, you know, yeah, as a squad. Yeah. I mean, Armagh. Again, I simply thought this year with Armagh. I just thought you can't count Armagh. I can't remember Jim last mm. year. And I kept knocking Armagh in the championship, and yeah, they kept winning. Yeah, kept but Armagh looked just so much stronger and together with McGinley than Derry. Yeah, Day. yeah. The pro- Armagh probably look at a team that's you know at the end or, or into a three four year cycle, and they're yes. you know they know exactly what everyone's at. Whereas Derry. Like every manager goes into the dairy job thinking that they're going to be the one to fix the problems and yeah. get every player on board. And as of yet, it's, it's yet to be done, you know. But McGinney, but well, McGinney needs an Emmett. McGinney needs to, needed to start producing, really. He needs to big deliver time. something, really. Yeah, big yeah. time. Big time. Big and they're a good championship, which last year, which probably, yeah. you know, but God, I mean, you know, it was looking dodgy for a while. Yeah, I'm not the biggest like, fan, like, and I've, I've, you know, I've been a big critic to his sometimes. And Social media and that, but you know, he definitely had them going well yesterday. Yeah. He definitely is the buy in of the players. Like, I know you'd hear a lot of yeah. different stories yeah. around the county that people might be happy with them, but from speaking to players about players that know their man, lads, oh, they all guys will do, to do anything yeah, for them, which is, but at the end of the day, that's, that's what you want. Like. You, want need. you know, and you can have all the people outside that circle talking. That was like you to me. That was like you. I do anything for you. Know. <laughs> 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 speaking of you, speaking of you and you, um, we'll move on, Emma, to, 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 to talk with your, to work with your good self. Um, Melvin Gales and Leitrim star of course 30 years of age now pushing on pushing on I'm 33 next week Willie what age are you? 35 there just before Christmas 35 I've not been in 35 years I've not been in 35 years I've not 30 years of age you made your debut 2006 at the age of 18 however you could have went to the Garrison game the ground ball yeah well it was just kind of a stop start more so um I wouldn't have played. I didn't play county minor. Soccer would have been kind of more. Would have been going to sport growing up 14, 15, 16. There was this like Rovers on the ridge and that at the time. But yeah, I would have made the debut in 2006 against Donegal. Um, actually, it's funny when you, when you think back that long. Like we actually drew with Donegal in Ballyshannon. Like that that long ago, you know, well, I wouldn't like to see it with foot against them now. <laughs> minute, but you know, not to be too negative. But yeah, and then played a few games that year with on. Then went back to like Rovers. Done the same in 2007, and then I joined the Guards in 2008. So. It, it was kind of a, I'd off, been offered a full time contract at the time with Sega Rovers, but with obviously being down in Temple Moor five days a week, it just wasn't. And what did you do when you were in Temple Moor then? What? I, ju- I basically got called, into, got called back in again to the county panel and travel up and down two nights a week for the county training and that, so just said I gave it a, yeah. I gave it a push then that year, so I didn't have looked back really since. Okay. Um, and that's something that maybe it <laughs> is more so in a smaller county. Um, but that's something we've seen in and, and Wiley you know and Wiley's done as well. But you know, the, this crossover of soccer and Gaelic, it's definitely not as prominent now. Yeah. Um you know, funny Wexford had Nick Doyle playing for he played rugby for his court against Saturday. Mm-hmm. And then I played a full game yesterday. 
one or one one. It's not you know you've done it way later. I don't it. I don't think it's doable now. No, it's I don't it's think not. the way the game's moved on. I don't think. Is it because Gaelic is also now more appealing in as regards players are taken care of a little bit better. You know, is that fair to say? There's more exposure to the GEA now. It's a hard. I don't know. It's hard. To, it's very hard to put your finger on it. Um, I miss soccer now. To be honest, when I did leave it, I personally thought soccer was a lot more enjoyable. Right. In terms of training, in terms of yeah. the way you're looked after. Now, at that time, there was a bit of money around Sligo Rovers at the time, yeah. and like even just the whole professionalism, wearing suits to games, coming in, your gear is there, everything's there, your boots are there, yeah. everything. It was just it was the whole professional feel about yeah. it, like you know. And I I, I thought that whole part of it. Now, and that's coming from, I suppose, we're a so-called leader county as such. Now, maybe when you're involved in throwing in these sort of setups, I think that if you're with the likes of Dublin or Toronto or them higher quality yeah. teams, that you are going to get that a lot more professional, you know. But for myself, even the training, like the pre-season was yeah. like... <laughs> I think the, the difference even in, 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 you know, we're talking in the soccer, like pre-season training is in the summer. You know, I mean, I find out in Yannick and Swiss when you're going to our own town and you're going to do your pre-season, you know, it was the long evenings and that, but you're doing the pre-season in Gaelic, you're... Slogging around a pitch, you know, knee deep in more, like you know, which yeah. was, was a big. Difference. But you had more, you had more days training. Like we were training four or five days yeah. a week, so you could ease up on. You didn't have to go and get dogged every Tuesday. No, there was very. Do you know, and it was very, probably at that time. I think the way soccer teams prepared, they were yeah. ahead of, of were, Gaelic yeah. teams. They didn't, yeah. you know, yeah. maybe the setups weren't as good. You know, you, you talk there about the throwing in Dublin setups, and even the Armagh ones at that time. Were, you know, were all top notch. There was no stone left unturned, but. I think, you know, no disrespect probably what Leitrim were doing then and what Sligo Rovers were doing Sligo Rovers. Yeah, there's no, there's no comparison, but yeah. they've definitely caught up in terms of that. Yeah, and, and, there's a, and that leads me on, I suppose, and then to, who you've unfortunately suffered last year, I think it was your, your third cruciate. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Which is crazy, we were just talking to Colin O'Neill, who's actually back playing again after his third. Um, you're, you're, you're on the way back. Uh, how's that going for you? Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, I'm up now with Ray Moore, who done the surgery back mm-hmm. in June last. I'm up with him on Thursday, so I have a test then as well. So it's a lot more, it's a lot more professional that aspect as well in comparison to the last two times I would have done this leg back in. And did you do it then Gaelic or soccer? Gaelic all the times, yeah. Um, when I done that 2009, then done 2010. I suppose you were, when you went up about your operation, it was kind of whenever you're ready, go back, go back. Mm-hmm. Whereas now it's a three month, six month, nine month test, and so it tells you exactly where you're at, and they won't. Let you basically yeah, go back yeah, unless you're 100. Yeah. So mentally, that alone, it's it's enough for you to be told. Well, you're 100. percent If it goes, it's not your fault. Yes. You've done everything. Do you know? And in fairness, this year I've no stone unturned with preparation of getting myself ready. So hopefully now Thursday, after testing results, I'll be hopefully back and looking to get three or four league games in at the end of the national league. So that's great. That's yeah. the aim. Anyway. What is that post up? It'll be nine months. It's nine months first of March. So on that right, and and so would Wiley from. A trainer background, yeah. and then they're from someone that's done it. You know, we've seen it in the Gales. We've seen I don't, I don't know how many this last few years. We don't really th- train on three or four G, so mm-hmm. we can't say that pitches are harder. What do you What do you think it's down to the increase in cruciate injuries that we're seeing in the GA? You're quite I think, better to talk about that. No? I think a big part of it is that we're moving faster than ever before. Right. You know, the game is moving faster. Players are moving faster. There's there's contacts that you know any contact now is at a higher speed. Yeah. You know, I think that's got a massive, massive part part to play in it. Like you know, the body's durable, but you know when two forces collide, traveling so hard. Like would yours contact? Um, the this one wasn't enough. Just pushed off it. Yeah. Um, like I would have been, I suppose, uh, the, the first two times I done this leg, and I've no problem saying about it. And I always, and ever since that day, the, the two times I've done it was the first time I was playing a club game from Michael Gaisley Santa Duff and I'd been at a wedding the night before and when I'd done that I definitely would have wouldn't the body definitely wasn't there I would have had a good few pints the night yeah. before on it the body definitely was probably that bit weaker second time again I'd done a rag week in Sligo yeah. for four solid days and then we did that weekend to play the game and it, definitely the body wasn't hydrated yeah. it was weak and I definitely would put partial of, it, of that down to the world the second time especially because I remember going out to the game that day and my body was just, I just wasn't yeah, ready for it and next thing I went and yeah. I even said to this day that if I ended up, which I wouldn't normally do, did go into beer like four game, I'd sooner or train and tell the manager, I'm not training tonight because yeah, I says, I'd sooner you really, really drop me off it because I just know the way my body reacts and everyone's different. You see junior footballers, some yeah, club yeah. like go out and they'll drink, they'll drink 20 pints a night and they'll never pick up an injury. It's probably their, their body's not used to it. You know, you know. And I definitely put, the, I all, no, then obviously done this one and I couldn't be in a better shape at the time. 
so then maybe that kind of defeats my argument in a wee bit. Uh, you know? a, big, a, big, a big thing in it now, like in, in the conditioning part of the program, is your your movement mechanics. You know, your landing and, and all that there, and that your your knees not giving way, that you're you're you're, you're moving properly, which is which is helping it. You know, or helping cut down the risk of it, but. I don't think you can ever you can ever eradicate it from the game. It's just no. you know, and it doesn't make a difference. Like well conditioned, no, no. I think you were playing rough the day we played the rock in a challenge game over there. Me and Kieran, Kieran Gorley were running for a ball together, just running, and I just heard the snap. Yeah, I looked around. Kieran was down. Me and him were just running, yeah. wrestling and our legs, kind of tangled, and it just the snap of it. There's no prevention of it. Like, no, no, obviously no. you can do and you can do your jump and your land and all. It's just that the increase, but yeah, that, that, that's that's interesting. It's just it's a shame that we do see so many in now. But look, yeah. best luck in coming back on, on from the third time. Nice minute. Uh, toughest opponent you've ever faced on the Gaelic field? Um, I suppose we in Connacht Championship. Keith Higgins probably was one. Yeah. I played against him when I one and that as well. He was always listen. Even to this day, you watch him. He's one of those markers that a slow corner forward like me back in the day. Wasn't <laughs> <one of those laughs> match, you know. Best you've played with. Um, I've been lucky enough. Like I suppose I played for Connacht a good few yeah. times, and uh, like, even when the Garda College, like Aidan O'Mahony was definitely one of the best. Like John Miskla, Aidan O'Shea, then most recently, like when I played with him, I you know you watched him so much often. He takes so much criticism, but we went into provincial there for Connacht back three four years ago, and I remember we met Ulster in the final, and I never seen a man boss a game. Even Michael Murphy, Sean Cavanagh came out in the middle to him. And do- I couldn't believe that they're just dominant he was, and like, the criticism he takes is just serious, you yeah. know. And he definitely be up there one of the best, yeah. if not, you know. It's and I suppose not that I'm standing up for him, but having witnessed him in full flow playing with him, do you know, he's a different, a different machine of a man altogether. When he's let loose, like, but um, David probably the three best, and anyway, I've been lucky enough to, to play with him. Anyway. And Parik, Parik Joyce would have been, I suppose, growing up was a hero of mine. Obviously, when he was yeah. in All Ireland, and then I was lucky to play with him as well for Connacht because it was a huge. A huge day for me. I remember going into the dressing room. We, we was there, back in 2008, I got called into the provincial, and I landed early. Pure eager, obviously. And the next thing I seen, Park Choice pull up, and yeah. I didn't even want to get out of the car. And then yeah. I get into the dressing room. It was just a tube in there, and yeah. I didn't even know where to look look at him, <laughs> whether to sit beside him or should I sit over. Oh, it was uh, it was a weird feeling. That I How was he? So man, yeah. nice fella, yeah. nice yeah. fella. Yeah. Some fucker as well. Uh, I think I think he's everyone's idol. Yeah, do you know. So yeah, so that'd be moment wise, it was definitely an honour to play it with him. At least, anyway, but yeah, uh, lucky, I was lucky enough, anyway, thankfully. Good to hear. Um, I suppose just finally, Leitrim's hopes for the year. Obviously, you're on your way back. You've got New York in the championship. As regards league, and then on the championship, what's... Yeah, well, listen, you're always hopeful at the start of the year. Obviously, it's going to take a, it's, that's going to put a bit of dent in the confidence there after the last weekend, going into Leash this weekend. Uh, it's very hard to predict where they're going to be at, you know, but you're just hoping that they can be competitive at least, and... Like you're looking at getting three, four results at least, finish with eight, ten points if we could, and just get a bit of confidence going into the New York game because, again, as I said, it's not the nicest place to go. And you can be an unknown. Do you know, there's different rumours yeah. going around. There's there's different rumours of different players. Jimmy Stark and Michael Gini from Kerry, yeah. suppose, over there. So like, we're going to be we're up against it no matter where we go. But the one thing that we'll never be is complacent. Like we may be, like people, we're not going to go to New York complacent because we know New York have full right to be able to beat us. Yeah. So, but listen, my aim is to get back for that. But for the lads, it's just to. Become more competitive in the league, at least. Um, it's just disappointing after I suppose only a day to to digest the defeat test. The, it's hard to know where we're at really. Yeah. Um, but all we can do is hope and see where we're at Sunday against Leash. Good stuff. Come here, not to cut you off. You were on with your best player there. Who's the best player you played with Leitrim with? Played with with Leitrim. Jeez, that's a hard enough one. Um, defence wise, probably depending on the quality. Like Gary Reynolds would be always mm-hmm. one up there. Like even Paul Brennan was one of the mm-hmm. best. They would have played. It's very hard to single lead. You know to since they started playing in 2006 you know I was lucky enough it's to play you know, like Declan really? Max there was a footballer yeah. back in the day he was he was top quality and like everyone had their own different I suppose whoever gave me the ball the most I suppose yeah. didn't it Paul Brennan Paul <laughs> Brennan was Paul Brennan, 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 a good friend so he always yeah. used to pass to me yeah. anyway, so I was happy <laughs> I think we we'll okay. get Brennan on the show aren't we Wayne? Yeah, yeah, Paul, yeah. Paul will come up no yeah. bother yeah. he'll be expecting, big, he'll be expecting big money but he'll come up with it he claimed enough expenses that's the way to get rid of him no, not on that. Listen, obviously, Emlyn, you know, was was a third cruise ship, but I think anyone that, that, that knows him and knows how dedicated to the game and that he is, there was never any doubt that he was he'd be back playing. You know, um, I was fortunate enough to work with him for a year and could do nothing but sing his praises. Like, you know, we we used to train in Clune on a, on a Friday night and or Tuesday night or wherever it would be. You know, on the Wednesday and you get there early to get set up. Like I'd be there at quarter past seven, you'd be out setting up twenty past seven. This morning be out shooting. You know, other lads wouldn't even have arrived yet, and you'd be the first on the pitch and the last one. And you know, and like I think we played Roscommon that 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 year in the championship over in, in Hyde Park, and John Evans was 
was managing them and was coming out they were maybe even six six three or something just going into half time and then they got a goal just before on the stroke of half time we kind of gave them a wee bit of space and we come out with a, the, the wind in the second half and they were doubling up on Emlyn the whole first half but he, he had four men on him in the second half you know and I think Emlyn he still kicked about seven or eight minutes that day and it was it was it was like he was our, he was our captain that year and he was an absolute leader and everything he done like he was just he set the tone you know it was, it was such a it was such an easy year to work with the team stuff was that leader leader me thanks I texted him before <laughs> 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 oh, it's <laughs> lovely lovely <laughs> are you tissue I've got to move on to reason two you know with that, Jim. a few more comments here but hey he's yeah. a dummy goal man where no, no, we'll start talking about that. Where were you born? I was born in Donegal, right? Yes, yeah, Donegal, Donegal, take you. No, Go on ahead, Jim. Yeah, just round a few of them up. Keelan and Donnelly, not a relation, by the way, do you? Thank you, they're all writing in. Have you gotten taller, Jim, or is it just the way you're sitting? Just the way I'm sitting. Uh, Mickey Kerr, referee, you're 33 next week. Sort them jeans out. Are they on you? That's the coach of the year. That's, congratulations, That's the coach Mickey. of the year. That's congratulations, right. yeah. Mickey. JP Geller, never seen Wiley do a pre season at the Swifts ever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't have to ban him from tweeting in. Wait, who, JP? JP, you know, I'm Tune in from Boston, by the way. Tune in from Boston. Now we have a serious one from Pat Armitage here. Uh, what was Rory playing at, bringing Pat Cadden up the length of the field to put him under pressure for no need, only to miss both points? Yes, Pat. There's men there to put it over and take the point. Yes, Pat, funny I put Ryan Lane's my fancy team hoping that he'd hit the left footer freeze, but uh, for Manny yesterday, Pat Cadden, the keeper, is a left footer, and Pat, I played Myers with Pat, he's fantastic, cool head in the ball, Very, rarely, rarely missed a free, but he was an outfield player for years, he's been back to doing goals, he does soccer and goals all the time, but he's been back now, he's, he's from Anna's number one keeper at the minute, but he came up to hit two frees, and he missed two, um, but he was kicking them out of his hands, mm. which was surprised enough. Yeah, yeah. As you can imagine. But the um, only yeah. thing I would say, like he kicks them out of his hands for his club. If he's good enough to do it, he's good yes. Enough. But you know, and, and a couple of years, am I not right in saying a couple of years ago when he was when he was playing outfield, he was kicking the freeze out of his hands too? Oh, sorry. Yes, but I suppose what I'm uh, maybe not criticising as much as he was coming up for twenty one yard freeze. He was coming up for this specifically left for a freeze, which you don't see too often. Mm. We seen Clarkson do it. You know, there in the final a few years ago to win it. Yeah. Um, but obviously, Rory has seen something like he's obviously a trainer and he's kicking in. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah just, you know, I, I think Pat Cadden's been a super fan. For, for brilliant fan. I think he's yeah, brilliant. You know, I'm not, you know, I think they've, they've, had, they've had decent goalkeepers this, this this past few years, but I think Pat is, is really, really been a great fan. Anyway, you know, he, he's so good with the ball at his feet. Like he's, he's yeah, but that's why it was strange yeah, to see yeah, the yeah, freeze that, you know, we can say he's very. But I'd good. say, listen, Pat's, Pat would be. 30 now, 28, 29. 31, yeah. yeah. So, say, listen, he's, he's an experienced fella. Maybe he just felt maybe the way the wind conditions was that it suited it out of his hands. Like. So, look, I suppose he'll, he'll maybe try it for another game. Or I, think, I think it's harsh to blame Rooster for that. Like, Pat coming up and missing the two of them because he kicked them out of his hands. So, who are No, that didn't someone give in there that. Blame Pat, Pat kicked them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Pat. <laughs> Yeah, well, just my wee fact to start too about the West County filled all hurling and football all star positions first. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna say Cork. That's you what I was gonna you say couldn't Cork wait to get this in. Well, somebody's right on CC. So Galway. He's all stupid. It was awfully. Oh, I. Dark Cairns. Well done. Very good. Pat Arledge, right. you're wrong. Right, I'm conscious of time here. Division two, loud eleven down one fourteen. Uh, Pete McGrath couldn't get one up on his on his native county. Down. Similar to Carlo and that kicking on from last mm -hmm. year, doing doing right yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, you know you'd have probably expected that as well. Yeah, aye, aye, although yeah, being honest. Yeah, um, Russ Common two twelve, me two twelve, probably two of the favourites for promotion. Um, Russ Common was definitely. Um, did the last minute penalty, didn't it? Yeah, yeah it's good. Like, I, I probably would have fancied Russ Common doing that to be honest. I probably would have too. Yeah, being honest, yeah. it's a good point for me as well. Like, it is. Yeah. It is. Um, probably two of the stronger teams. All right. Yeah. And then we go to, I mean, Cavan, Clare 112, Cavan 29, mm. Cavan coming back to, to draw down in Cavan were, Cavan were getting hockeyed at one time. They were getting they were well beat, so it's, it's, a, it's a good turnaround. Now, the talk has been for a number of weeks, that, you know, a number of months that McGinnon has, has lost the dressing room, which you don't often hear about 
I would count the squads really, but yeah. this seems to no, be. No, I listen, you don't often hear it, and I suppose yesterday or on Saturday I looked through that Calvin team and being about Calvin football for a while, there wasn't too many names you'd recognise. Yeah. He's you know, they weren't really household names, so you know, the rumours about him losing the dressing room, maybe it's he's shipped some of the older players out and he's given these new young boys the the run of it, like and you know, they were leading with a couple of minutes to go then, so listen, if they were getting bit by ten points and they've come back to go and to win the lead in the minute or two to go, it mightn't be as bad as, as what rumours are leading us to believe, because if players are down to <coughs> they certainly wouldn't have come back from ten points down, but it's just hard to know to what extent the rumours are true. Like Evelyn what yeah, but the, uh, listen, it's hard, you know, some of you hear them sort of rumours, but at the same time, them boys are representing the county, like, do you know, they're going down there, they're not going in there, if they didn't want to go down there, no, they wouldn't go in, they're not yeah, going yeah. to go on that bus Saturday evening and say, do yeah. I not playing for him, do you know, yeah. but yeah. without obviously fought, they're too yeah. nearly getting a result down there, it's not the easiest place to care come on the site in the last number of years, like, oh, it's, yeah, you know, most definitely, yeah, but it's not, you know, I mean, and we can draw on it from, from our perspective, I mean, last year, things obviously weren't right, you know, we got relegated, we lost, a championship match by nine points. We went into the first round against a man, lost that by nine points. So, yeah. you know, these things need to be turned around or rectified pretty quickly. Maybe honest, honest words and honest chats need to be had. I think, I think people will, people will obviously jump to conclusions if, if you're involved in it or if you're supporting a county that was was beaten the first league game. But it's it's one league game. Like I don't think it's time to panic. Do you know what I mean? So, listen. Only they know, I suppose. That's it. Only they know. know. It's, it's only they know. I well, stuck, it's I just stuck, I stuck here out this man and I never I didn't drop the tools, so anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I <laughs> dropped them. <laughs> God help them all. Uh, and then and then another big result, but Cork won sixteen opening their essentially opening their, their pitch or their, their account of the pitch. Tipperary three sixteen, Quinlan's into the four again. It's a great result for Tip. I listen tips we, we were just chatting the game before we come on air. Um that year that we got pipped for promotion in Division Four, it was Clare and Tipperary went up, you know, in the two places, and I mean they the, wiped us. Ah, uh, the Tipperary wiped us, and we probably should beat Clare that day down yeah. in the town. Well, the difference in even, but they were. Uh, you could Tipperary see, you could see that day just, that they were going to be. They were just unbelievable. Like you know, when I, I, I think I told Chrissy Breen a few times about this Tipperary team, how good they were, and he didn't believe yeah. me. And Chrissy Breen, you know, I've been telling him about Tipperary, and he didn't believe me, and didn't believe me, and they've just kicked on. Like and I. You know, you're talking about promotion there. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Tip go for you know go close to getting. But promotion. you know what? See the more you mention like Claire and Tip, and we we're talking about Galway. My stat or my uh, opinion at the start of a dual counties and when one one mm. side stronger than the other really yeah. isn't standing. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe in Limerick and and what Wexford. But you Galway, Tip, mm. Claire, we well, maybe not Wexford. Cork are still up there, like yeah. Cork, yeah, but then if, if, anyway. Like that, that division, team. that division two is a minefield. Like you know, Big it's team. very competitive. Like you win two games, you'll be in, you'll be in the shape for promotion. You yeah. lose two, you could be looking over your shoulder. Like okay, well we look, we we look up from it's division. It's an interesting two, one. Like it is. Yeah. We'll, we'll have tip. We'll have our predictions later. And um, division one then, the Dubs two seventeen to two ten against Kildare. Kildare started relatively well, but I mean uh, Dublin strong enough outfit, but at the same time not by far and away. Like, Strongest team, um, then yeah. I just caught up in a few of the highlights this morning, or the recorded last night. But there was, in fairness, Ke- or Kildare had a number of goal chances. I think Daniel Flynn had a kind of a one on one, two on one yeah, situation. Yeah, 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 it off. But they're like, when you're playing like the double, if you don't take them opportunities, you know, yeah, you're lucky, you're lucky to get them, but when you get them, you have to make sure you, you have, have to. to but Kildare did lose a couple of big hitters early on as well, to you know, to be fair, like, um, they, they, they lost a couple of players. But, but Brian Fenton's performance, I think, yes. stood out just oh, defensively attack. Like I suppose it was just a complete. But he, he looked like a complete. I don't know. Was it? Uh, I've seen someone tweeting maybe that he was. I think last year yeah. that feeling that got got yeah, the maybe yeah, better of him. Weave it that he nearly had a point to prove to him to say. Yeah. But he definitely proved it. Only like, like his, it, his it, finishing and his. It's nearly scary for for the rest of the. Yeah. And then the four team McCarthy out of midfield, put him half back, and then put Michael Dyer in there. Like it's like realistically, you know, Kildare were probably going there. Do you think so? Ah, oh, definitely. Mm. Uh, you, I mean, you mentioned Michael Darren McCauley. I mean, there's a man, absolute star for a number of years. Year. Last year, player of the year. Last year, then, you know, really a bit part player. Now has a point to prove. Like, I mean, wow. Gavin has the meaning out of it. Then the lad that has a Howard lad kicked three points. Yeah. yeah. Even Bro- Broly got another two points. Bernard Brogan coming back on too. Yeah. You know, he's a real. Horse well, seems to be laying it off a bit more as opposed to. 
Maybe beating the man. But look, maybe but if, if you watch, if you watch, I don't think it was Kieran Reid analyzed it last night. If you watch the way they play, but they just run the ball and they come in the loop. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. very rarely see Dublin kicking the ball from the midfield into no. a corner forward. Dean Rock beat his man, turn. It, it's just yeah. coming on the loop. So they make it look yeah, so. The, the play system they play, play, play so much width, and then you know just come in on the loop certain every time. Like when Rogan won't go out and win the ball in the corner, beat two men. He will come and then there's something he just can't. You know, you often find him the final man that actually gets a shot away. When he gets on the ball, he doesn't even need to take his play. Yeah, he's just, just on it. Yeah, just yeah, on it. Yeah. And, and, going, and it's impossible to stop. <laughs> and they can never see Michael Darren McCall even shooting. He'll run yeah. it until yeah. he gives it to someone. They, they, they stick to what they're good at. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we haven't even started talking about Conor Kelly and, oh, and, and Kenny. And, and listen, there's probably you know Connelly. you know yourself, I'm in Dublin football from being at St Bridget's. There's there's another thirty in that kind of oh. that aren't in the panel that could make a pound of their own and still get the probably in an Ireland yeah, semi-final. That's it, yeah, 100%. Yeah. We're always talking about the doves, but that's because the, the, the cream. That's it. Cream of the top. Uh, the game of the week, well, I suppose we, we were able to see it on TV, but it seemed to be the game of the weekend. It was Kerry 2-18, Donegal 3-14. So Kerry just just pipping them in the end. Um, Bonner, Boner seems to have Donegal mm. playing good football. Listen, to seen, you know, yesterday, the racked up a big school no, line. No. <laughs> <We're> Bonner, Bonner. <laughs> <laughs> we call him Bonner before. Right? Yeah. Bonner. I mean, we'll call him Declan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think for him, like uh, he's been there before, and he's been in this year, and he, you know, there's a few lads back, and it was just going to be interesting to see how they went. But geez, they went on mighty close yesterday. I, I didn't give them a chance come down there. Like, uh, no, I expect probably. Bigger things from Kerry this year than, than last year, um, but she's done it all very unlucky. But well, Kerry had a relatively changed yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the two of them were two kind of. The you were impressed by O'Shea. Yeah, the, the number eleven. Was very 11 good. Yeah, and, and, in fairness, there was a couple of. No offense, Paul Brennan. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't kick three points in play. <laughs> but no, they, uh, no. In fairness, anyway, obviously all the talk was about the Clifford lad, you yeah. know, and I don't think. Listen, he. I suppose media are very good at pumping up this yeah, and that, and even he gave uh, the first ball he got, he gave it to Barry John Keane who had to beat yeah. his man. To, and, but then all they said was was an assist from David Clifford, yeah, which yeah, you know yeah. they're trying to give him as much credit as they could. But listen, he's only 18, 19 years of age, and he's a huge lad, and he'll be he's going to be a future star. But it was, it was the likes of that Sean and stuff, and he was like minor captain in two thousand and sixteen uh, yeah. for Kerry, like so that's only two years ago yeah. coming out. And it was the likes of the likes of them young lads that sold the show yesterday, but. But for Donegal, like they have a lot of young lads. There's a young lad there, Will Back. He got the goal. Tony McLennan there on the start of the second half. I played with Tony over in Boston three years ago. He was only 18. Like I still couldn't believe he's only 21. He like just keep an eye out for that lad. He was a monster over there. Like he, he basically ran the Boston Championship on his own at 18 years of age, and he's had problems with his hips and that since. But it was great to see the likes of him. Um, and then obviously up front you have McNeebus back, who's. Huge oh, addition to the massive joy of watching. You know, and then you have McBrady, who's literally he's around a lifetime. Yes, yeah, so Paul McBrady, I suppose Jim McDonald from Carnation Street then um, tweeted but quite controversially today. I don't know if you've seen no. it. Uh, well, he wasn't too complimentary about the Irish language or the point itself because he says he couldn't uh, make out what was being said. But um, the fact that McBrady caught the ball in midfield and ran the length of the pitch and scored a point, I thought he could have worked yeah. it out for himself. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it was a fantastic it was a score of the weekend. Yeah. I think yeah, he's, geez, he's, he's a serious, serious yeah. operator. Like when we were chatting, it seems like he's been about for ages and he's still only oh. about 25. But, and he, makes it, he got a free kick in the first half on the 45, just outside it. And, like, and people say, that's when you're free. But he just took two steps, yeah. and it went it went twenty yards over the bar. Like it's just as natural. It's just size. It's just size. Talking, just there, size was legs, talking yeah. there about the dogs, but you know they're inside forwards coming on the loop. Paddy McBride is probably the best in Ireland. At it. Yeah, you know inside that late run round on the loop and in through all the traffic and pops it over the bar. Like yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And then he got a fourteen men for a lot of that game. Like you know, Man, look, that's, uh, that's yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah you forget that. You know, he gets in the first half. Um, the winning score. Your man double bounce up. Double bounce up. Who do we goal have next? Goal will go next week. Like. That'd be an interesting one as well. There's no guarantees in that division. No, like, no, no, we move on then the Bon and Mayo while you were in close at this game. I was, I was up at it. Uh, well, I was up for the first 55 minutes. I missed all the shenanigans at the end. Um, I see Malachi Rook today was giving out about the winner shooting the stud. It was uh, pushing the back before it, but probably you know, more so than probably what we're going to come on to Tyrone. I think that Monaghan ended with 12 men too. Like, you know, when, if you're in games with 12 men, you're not going to win many of them. No. But, uh, I listen, uh, enjoyable first half. Like uh, both teams try and try new men, and, and you know went at it. Monaghan went, I think it was four two up. Me 
Mayo come back to four all, and then Mayo went seven six up just before half time, and it was you could you couldn't fault equipment or the effort like you know, um, and it was tight and tense, and it was just it was a massive Mayo crowd up in Clonus yesterday. They were very very surprised that you know the the travel and support that yeah. they had for a league game like in January, but I, it was enjoyable. Now I I really enjoyed it. Like. Stuff should have stayed at the end now. You like. should have Galway and that's part of your contract, you have to stay at the end. <laughs> Galway and you don't have a receipt in there, then. <laughs> you can ask them <laughs> direct right after Galway and Tyrone. Uh, Galway won nine to Tyrone. I mean, Galway were seriously depleted, you know, you know, like a size and making all retiring, but Hanley and that, you know, yeah. injured that's a great result for them. Massive one for Galway, massive one. I, I didn't see it happen at all. No, neither did I. Being honest, like, uh, uh, listen, I've I seen Galway last year over there and they played for Mana. They were very impressive. You know, they're, they're direct and they're, they're big, they're a powerful team. And, you know, they had a good year last year. As we said, that they'll be looking to kick on. But disappointing, probably, from Tyrone's point of view again. And, you know, what I said about Monaghan ended with 12 men. You're not going to win many You're games. You're not. And there wasn't a pile in it in the end. Like, there was only a kick of a ball. Well, that's it. it you know, so. Yeah. Emlyn is is a Tyrone team without the two captains, you're not going to have Sean going forward, but is a, is a Tyrone team or squad without the two captains, a very different Tyrone, most notably maybe Colin Cavanagh over this last couple, few years. Yeah, like I suppose, it's, it, it's funny, I suppose we're, depending maybe where you can come from or live, like I would have had, if I was putting, if, well, I'm not going to mention betting, but if I was back <laughs> in my own head, I, w- I wasn't surprised at all to see Galway mm-hmm. uh, beat Tyrone. Really? But obviously you're up here closer to that and sometimes you can get a kind of influence into that whole bubble. My heart probably influences. You know, but you can see that even throughout the championship that oh, Tyrone, even Ulster, is this, is that, and yeah. then they get out and against the Dublin, it's a totally different. But like Galway have such the f- quality footballers, like likes of Comer, likes of Walsh, like they'd walk onto their own team, yeah. like, in fairness. Like, yeah. And like they're powerful, they can play ball, they're fit, like a, they're half bashing Brad Bradshaw driving through the middle, like all over the pitch they yeah. have a strong squad and like they've been consistent in one kind of two years ago, they probably could have maybe pushed on a bit maybe last year and they were probably surprised mm-hmm. that was coming actually bet them. Yeah. Um but like they're they're a merit like and I like you I can see them taking points of like some on and I can see them taking points of Donegal. I think they'll do all right. Yeah, um I like people may say oh they might be favourite for going down. Definitely in my own terms I think on any given day, like they probably suit a nice dry dry pitch. Even though Tune wouldn't have been that, yeah, I think on a nice sunny yeah. day they're they're gonna be a lot better than the team. But psychologically, that for them yesterday, you know, beating you know, beating Tyrone. But again, it's home advantage. It's your own patch. Yeah, yeah. coming down. That's the, last the first time in Division One seven years. Well enough for it. Ah, completely. The Paddy Tally, Paddy Tally involved now with them too. Yeah, so though he's not involved yet not because involved he's still yet, with yet. the ranch. But um, yeah, that's a, that's a big coup. It's mm, a lot of traveling. It but is. Mickey would be very disappointed. Very. You know what? Oh, they only scored two points in play. Yeah. What did Sean Donnelly have to say about it? Uh, old chat never written <laughs> really, <laughs> but even Tyrone because they they've thrown a lot of good forwards and it's quite hard to pinpoint why they're not. They're not it's, scored, it's, I don't know. it's a big year for Tyrone like it's you know probably been been disappointing in Croke Park in their in their last two outings in the previous two years so there's there's people maybe maybe looking at Tyrone to see and you know is is this team going to kick on and you know are they are they going to really can put it beat up to Dublin and the beat kind of challenge you know yeah. but, you know they're probably. The last two years showed they're they're probably a, a good bit ahead in Ulster, but you know with the reemergence of of Donegal is that even as are they even as far ahead now? So it's it's going to be interesting. Like you know it, again, it's it's only one league game. I wouldn't be no. But, but I'd say it would have been a game ways. they were looking at taking. Oh, definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely. Who are they out yeah. against next? I'm not sure. Really. Away to Dublin. Do you know like home to Dublin? Oh, next Saturday. Dublin, 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 Saturday. But if they do, if they're bet, like you're looking to yeah, the bottom yeah, table, and then all of a sudden, yeah, all of a sudden, sudden you're looking over your shoulder. You're chasing yeah. points, yeah. like the more than Mayo beat Man and Mayo, like had seven or eight lads there, same as Dublin, only back from holidays, yeah. like not flying and all cinders, but they'd be delighted with the two points. I think probably, I think probably the disappointing thing for ones and that on a different topic is my. Playing the Ireland final in Croke Park next Saturday evening and throwing oh, a yeah. in Dublin and Oma yeah, next Saturday evening too. You know, it's, so it's yeah. really disappointing. It is. It is like what do you do, um, lads? We we'll, we're gonna have yearly predictions. Sorry, the predictions for the league for the year. Uh, Wally, you're gonna start off Division Four. Who do you, who do you see getting promoted? Uh, I, I, you'd have to, you know, be a banker for Leash. You would you would imagine. Um, you would you would expect them to go up and. Who goes with them? At that when Antrim got yesterday, you don't know. I think they have four home games as well. It's it's Leash anyway, and, and, and one up there. I expect Leash to win the division. Oh, I need, I need an answer. I'd love to, 
to say Lee Thrum, but <laughs> no, worry. listen, I, I, I'll probably go with Antrim. Antrim, he's yeah. Antrim. Jib Division 3, you're going to do? Who's up and who's down? Uh, well, who's going to be up? Do you look below Division 1, Jib, do you? <laughs> Oh, there is a division. You to division two next year. Thirteen aside. Division three. Who do you fancy going up? I would have fancied three teams. First of all, I would have said from Anna, Derry, Westmeath. But since Westmeath beat Derry, I'll rule Derry out of it, and I'll say from Anna, they'll go up. And Westmeath to go up. I think. What about our man? Nah. No, you forgot about them. So no, no, not like that. Say from Anna. I always did say from Anna first. Yeah. Put money on them. From Anna, Westmeath. Yeah. Good. Uh, division two. That's me. Division 2, I am going to back. Well, I, I fancy Dress Common strongly from the start of the year. Who did you say was going down? Oh, down at Division 3. I'll have to say. Just list the names it's in it for him. Here. <laughs> Offley. Offley. Offley and Wexford. Wexford. Yeah. We got there. We got, we got there. there. Um, Division 2, I'm going to say, I'm going to go with Dress Common to go up and tip. And then I think this isn't this isn't it because they're my neighbours, but I'm going to say Cavan. I know that's a big call. Cavan and Louth. I hope you're not going to Cavan anytime soon. Jesus Christ. Where are you, where are you going for diesel? <laughs> <laughs> Bad job, a happy car. <laughs> and then uh, Division 1 then, who's, who's going to win? Yeah, it's, the, the Division 1 is it's very hard to predict the times because a lot of teams they don't really want to win it mm-hmm. or they don't want to be in the final or they don't want like it's kind of nearly survival is the main thing yeah. isn't it like, and, yeah. like no more than that trying out new teams like, like Zakari or Donegal so like, you're, like obviously you're going to be expecting Dublin to be in the final I'm going to make a bold prediction and think just because it, like obviously the win yesterday was huge for them first time back I think Galway okay. it's a bold one I know but I just think they're going to have their solid 15 out every game whereas like they're going to be playing against a lot of experimental teams and to go down I think Monaghan are going to struggle um, now depending on when Conor McManus is back, like obviously he's a huge loss for them. Um, and with them, don't you go maybe. Again, I just think like I think Michael Murphy and Ian and Boys aren't back to that end of the stages mm-hmm. of the league. Huge game, huge game for Donny Gall Gall. Like if if, if Donny Gall win, keeps them, you know, it gives them that yeah. lever. Whereas if Gall yeah. win that, they're looking two out of two. You know they're well able to keep a scalp, take a scalp of like as we see most that, you know? years, yeah, as you say, because you're even for top four for the semi finals, it is so. Well, it, it's 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 he doesn't like Ulster. Do you know? Yeah. Huh? Did you get used to that? I didn't even think of it. I wasn't even thinking. <laughs> he doesn't come up here on his holidays. He's obviously <laughs> going to Galway this year. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's 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 grand. Do you know what it is? Yeah. All right, Jib. Any more comments? Yeah, I'll try and get through a few here. Just Sean Beggs. With Donegal scoring 3-14 in Kerry, where do you see Tyrone going from the dire performance, which only produced three points in play? We sort of threw it already. Anita Keogh, uh, Tyrone, ruining everyone's accumulators yesterday. Darren <laughs> Cairns. <laughs> Arthur McNeillis is the big difference for Donegal, full stop. Yeah. Uh, Neil Rafferty. Does Mr Rafferty think he's some sort of young cool kid with the jeans and trainers? Come on, Roy, act your age. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I wrong? I'm not getting into you. Jib looks like he enjoys himself in the slopes. <laughs> with burger and chips there. I did really thank you. That's part is the spring broke in the seat from last year. <laughs> 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 Very low. Very low. <laughs> and then uh, Gary Milani. Should John McGuire get a five star weak foot upgrade? I have no idea. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> we agree, we agree. All right, boys, look, uh, I think that, that's nearly it. Just to mention that we have the fancy football on the go, the Gaelic League, League which you, you, can, you can, of course, still join. Um, the code and, and all that is, is on the, the website. Is on the website. Um, so you can, you can join that um, and, uh, and, and, and get involved. Um, Jib, good to have you back. Looking forward to a big year. Sharpen up on the news, all right? That's one thing I'm going to say to you. Sharpen up on the news. There was a lot of falls. It was a lot of fake news last year, Jim. <laughs> it was the year of fake news. Man. You know, never mind Trump. Hey, people, like the runners, people like the runners. All right. He made the you that one of the Calvin. He was I hope he's Calvin. Did you told him that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Calvin for Sam. Wiley, good to have you with us. Great for a show. Great to be here. We knew you weren't shy, here. so uh, you kind of proved that, didn't we? Uh, I have a mood buddy here, Kim. He's like a man that's here years, isn't he? Uh, uh, Evelyn, you're, you're a cool man in the camera. Really you, you, there's no, no body there. It's great to have you. Look, appreciate it. Thank you. Might have you back again. Best luck with Leitrim. 
um, with everything and uh, look cheers for coming up thanks many lads right. folks look uh, thanks for thanks for, for, for tuning in this week um, we'll be back every Monday now at the new time of 8 o'clock uh, with, with Wiley with Jib with myself and with Marty and um, Look, as we say, your opinion matters. Tune into Facebook and Twitter and YouTube to, to leave your comments and any suggestions you have for the show or any of the boys. Um, look, we'll see you next week and thanks for tuning in. Good night.